I admire you so much for being o o open about your faith. Oh, um, thank you. Do you feel like, I, I feel like you sometimes get for that. Do you feel like that, that that's a hard thing? Oh, yeah, sh I sure do, but that's nothing new. That's nothing new, you know? If I was of this world, they would love me just like that. But I, as it is, I'm chosen out of this world. That's uh, John uh, 15, 18 through 20. It's the way it is. It ain't nothing new. 2,000 years ago, they hated him too. They hate the gospel because they love their sin. And we're seeing this right now today. They hate the gospel because they love their sin. It's all God, right? Because, you know, we're, we should, as believers, we should go the rest of our life trying to figure out God. That should be an everlasting hunt. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Why? What? How did I get to here? And man, I was at the gas station, and I was just thinking yeah. about my auntie, and then my my cousin was there. And, you know, whatever those coincidences are, that's been my life, and that's what keeps me curious about what God has next. Yeah, what's next? My eyes is like a three year old, just curious, like Christmas. Let me ask you a question: Do you have a passion for God? Do you desire him? Do you long for him? I just feel like we're in competition right now because they are trying to normalize the devil. They are trying to populate. The devil is, is on the main stage at award shows. <laughs> graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first transgender woman to win this award. <laughs> and, and I'm so... <laughs> thank you. And I just want to thank all the incredible transgender legends before me who kicked these doors open for me so I could be here tonight. And in every video and yeah, man. signs and symbols. I said, you know what? We need to stop treating our relationship with Jesus like the little buddy that you talk to before you go to bed at night and not be more vocal about all the things that God means to us and all of the things that God has brought us through. So don't let anybody tell you that it's not loving if you stand flat-footed and speak the truth about this issue of homosexuality. What's not loving is to look someone in the eye when God says they are in jeopardy of an eternity in hell and merely wink and nod at their sin because you're afraid of being called names. Speak the truth, saints. Because there's been a lot of moments that you didn't post about, mm -hmm. but yet you know, how did God decide to get yeah. me through this? Yeah, man. And yeah, they going above and beyond to promote the devil. And it's pissing me off. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, they used to, devil worshipers used to be real secretive. Oh, like yeah. going down in the basement, this yeah, secret man. world. Now they just Now like, they on the ah. device too. Yeah, Believe they, that. Yeah. I do want to come back and I want to talk to you about uh, Fast 10 as well. Yeah. We have a world to win. We have nations to save. We have dragons to fight. And it can be done, but it cannot be done in the power of a man can be done in the power of God. Uh, hey, Big, if you don't mind, man, because so many people in the city that we love and be loved by is, is carrying a lot. And, mm -hmm. and like when we talk about the devil seem to be way more popular than, than the relationship with Christ, if it's possible, man, can I just close this interview out with a prayer from Mama Kim Burrell you, to yes bless you the can, brother, if please. Don't mind that, I Not hey, brother, there's no the such thing called too much prayer, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank no you. No such thing called too much Mama prayer. Kim Burrell Kim Burrell, the hello there, legendary. There There's so many people who are going through a divorce and foreclosure, homeless. They were living their best life. They got degrees on the wall. They got their whole family sleeping in sheds in downtown LA. And even if you're in mansions, the mental, emotional, yes, and man. psychological warfare has been real for most of us. So this is my mama right here. And I just want her to bless everybody Please do. with a prayer. Don't, 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 don't crash. Closing your eyes driving, okay? But just receive this prayer from Mama Kim Burrell. Here we go. Dear God, thank you. You're everything to us. You're everything through us. Without you, we are nothing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your protection. 
Thank you, dear God, for your guidance. For every person that sees and hears this, do more for them, be more through them. Thank you for all things, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I don't know the details of Chris Pratt and Tyrese's Christian faith, but I was encouraged that they were willing to say true things about Jesus that go against what the culture promotes and celebrates. Chris Pratt said he was willing to be hated by the world because the world hated Jesus first, and Tyrese spoke out against the blatant Satan worship that we are seeing in more and more of our culture today. Similarly, I was very impressed by what Chris Broussard, an American sports analyst and commentator, said to Charlemagne the God, host of The Breakfast Club. Now, hey, first hey. question, Chris, do you not like homosexuals? <laughs> I, I'm fine with homosexuals. I, 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 I have no problem with homosexuals. Um, obviously, as I stated on ESPN, I'm a Christian, uh, but I come across all types of people who are living lifestyles that I may not agree with. Not just homosexuals, and I can get along with, you know, people, uh, come across people like that on an everyday basis, obviously covering the NBA. Well, as, as I said during Donkey of the Day and as we talked about last night on the phone, Chris, what makes you so perfect? I, I, like, I told you that we're, we're human beings living a spiritual existence. Like, it's impossible for us not to get dirty walking through this thing called life. Chris unashamedly speaks the truth about the reality of living peaceably among people who call themselves homosexuals, yet not agreeing with their lifestyle. He also brings up the fact that sin is universal and affects every human being. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Next, Chris accurately explains the important difference between pursuing God versus ignoring God in pursuing sin. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm never claimed to be perfect. That's actually why I called you last night and rapped with you. Um, I think you mis misinterpreted what I was saying. I definitely don't want to come off as that I'm perfect. I'm just striving to be Christ-like. That's all I'm saying. And uh, I think that's the mark of a Christian, that we strive to be Christ-like. All of us fall and stumble, and I have fallen and stumbled many times since I've been a Christian. But I always, you know, repent and ask God for his forgiveness. And, you know, I move on from there. I think that's the mark of a Christian. And I think if a person that stumbling and falling while you're trying to live for the Lord is different than going out and hunting for sin. My dear friend, there is no such thing as a carnal Christian. The Bible never teaches that a person can be a genuine Christian and live in continuous carnality and wickedness and sin all the days of their life. Next. Chris unashamedly explains what the Bible teaches about homosexuality. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Fornicators, homosexuals, robbers, thieves, adulterers uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it goes on to list a few other things. Romans chapter 1 says it's unnatural. Um, obviously, the Old Testament talks about it being uh, wrong. Uh, so, but people, you know, like to say, well, it says that in the Old Testament, Leviticus but not in the New, but no, the New Testament, Romans and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and a few other scriptures clearly condemn uh, homosexuality, along with all forms of sexual immorality. Keep in mind that Chris is a sports commentator, not a pastor. Yet he speaks more truth than many of the most popular pastors in the country today who absolutely refuse to state so clearly what the Bible obviously teaches, such as Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and Mike Todd. Like an issue like gay marriage, people look to the ministers for, for, sure. for, uh, for leadership. Sure. Is that an issue that's for you against the rules? Um, you know, it, it, it would be, but Mark, I, I don't, you know, I don't really focus on a lot of those things. I try to stay in my lane of what I feel called to do. Mm. Now that, that does come up in, in interviews and things, but just don't feel like that's, that's not my core message. My core message is how do you, how do you help us help this self image? How do you let go of the past? How do you raise good children? How do you reach your dreams? And I, trust me, I've talked to enough LGBT. They are not all the same. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Anyone any, than all Christians No, no. Uh, but. How, how do we, first of all, has your thinking evolved on this? E evolved and evolving, mm -hmm. evolved and evolving. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know. And you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title, Transformation. You Next, Charlemagne asks about people who are born gay and again. 
Chris gives a terrific answer that we pretty much never hear from the most popular pastors in the country. So what about those that say, okay, uh, I was born gay, so how can you say that I'm a born sinner? Like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not... I'm not asking to be sinful. I, I'm, I'm born this way. This is naturally who I am. I mean, first of all, my personal belief is that you you aren't born that way. I think the scientific studies, you have those on both sides. It's really inconclusive. But regardless, we're all born in sin. I mean, I was born attracted to women. I'm still attracted to women. I'm married 17 years, never cheated on my wife. But man, I've been tempted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I mean, I cover the NBA. I'm seeing beautiful women all the time. I've had actresses throw me a little rhythm, but I got to resist. I got to fight against temptation. And that's the life of a Christian, that you, you fight against the temptation. And if you stumble and fall, then you get back up, you repent, you ask God for forgiveness, and you move on. And I think that applies to homosexuals as well. If, if a person who's a same-sex attractive you know, is sincerely trying to live for the Lord, and they fall, and they fall in the same-sex relationship or act, and they, they're really trying to serve the Lord. They repent, and they ask for forgiveness, and they keep trying to serve God, and they fall time and time again consistently. I believe that person is a Christian, but that's why I said yesterday it's about unrepentant sin. There's a difference. Am I repenting? Or am I just saying, yo, this is how I am, God, and I don't care what you say, I don't care what your words say, I'm not even asking for forgiveness. Yeah, because everybody knows that that's how people are born, right? We have the LeVay brain study, you know, uh, Bailey, Bailey and Pillard's twin study. Um, we have Hamer's X chromosome study. Um, you know, we've got uh, Savick's pheromone study. Uh, so, of course, I mean, all of these things, by the way, none of these things, none of these things, none of these things has proven a genetic connection to homosexuality. And even if it did, it wouldn't matter. Do you, you realize that there is nothing that proves that people are homosexual? Like Chris, we as Christians need to tell people the truth that being naturally inclined towards particular sins does not make those sins acceptable. We are all sinners who need to fight and struggle against our sin natures, not to earn salvation from God, but because we have been born again by God and have received new natures that now desire righteousness, holiness, and obedience to God. Ah, so that we just go on and just live any way we want to? Yes. Because when you're his, he'll even change your want to. Amen? The true Christian is not the one who lives a way he doesn't want to. The true Christian is the one who has his want to changed. Amen, somebody. We're transformed and conformed to the very image of Christ so that even our desires are different. Do, do you see the difference in those two things? Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos and want to help support this channel, the best way to do it is to just watch these videos until the end and click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement.